it's, believe it or not, God gives us wisdom through people in our lives. I know that's shocking, and sometimes as young people we think, no way am I supposed to get wisdom from my parents, and no way does God give us wisdom sometimes through the, the advice of our parents. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I do want to say a few things. I, I, I heard something. This is about celebrating mothers and mother figures. And, and when I say mothers, and I've done this for years, I'm not just talking about biological mothers. There are a lot of people that lost their mothers, never knew their biological mothers, but they everyone had a mother figure in their life or multiple mother figures in their life. And this is a day celebrating all of those. So it's grandmothers, mothers, you know, mother figures, people that, that help to be a part of who you are today and the raising of you and the giving you advice and giving you discipline sometimes when needed. So that's what today is all about. I heard something downstairs. I had Cade actually teaching downstairs, which amazing, wonderful job. He said something at the very beginning, and I thought I would share that. I hope he doesn't mind. Oh, well. But he said that when he was younger, his mother would tell him, you're not actually mine, but you are a, you belong to God. And I'm just, he's letting me borrow you for a little while. And I thought, wow, is that not, I mean, that sums it up, doesn't it? It sums it up. I mean, we belong to God. We are God's creation. We are God's children, every one of us. I mean, we are the only part of the only thing of His creation that is created in His likeness and image. And He turns around and gives the perfect mother to us and and blesses the mother but says, I want you to take care of this one. I want you to raise this one under my instruction. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of them that don't do it that way. But the whole idea is God says, here is your child that I'm entrusting you to raise for me. That is powerful. And mothers, you have done an amazing job, especially the mothers that are here today and the mother figures have done an amazing job. I want to read a few verses and then I'll kind of go over what I want you to hear because I want you to leave really understanding what God has put in your lives. And again, some of you have lost your, but they've gone on to be with the Lord, and, and, um, but you still celebrate them. In Proverbs 1, 8 and 9, it says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. And then in Proverbs 31, and we know the, the woman of Proverbs 31, it's, a lot of people read it in Valentine's Day, a lot of people read it in different scenarios. But I want you to hear Proverbs 31, 26. It says, She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Think about, I want you to think about Mary for a moment. Because every time I, I, we get close to Mother's Day, I start thinking about the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing set her apart that made, and I've, you know, I know that there's some religions that think different of this, but this is just truth. The only thing that made her who she was is her devotion and faithfulness to God. Her willingness to study and grow spiritually. Was she a sinner? Yes. Did she make mistakes? Yes. Did she probably at times in her young life, because she was young when she had them, but would it, probably in her young life, did she make mistakes and disobey her parents? I'm sure she did. But what set her apart was her faith, her willingness to be devoted to God's Word. 
and to try each day to do better than she did the day before. That's the way I always word it. Is, is look, our job in our Christian way of life is to say, okay, yesterday I failed in this, these areas. I need to grow and do it different today. Does that make sense? I want to be a better follower or disciple of Christ today than I was yesterday. And I feel like Mary had that mentality. And, and she was told by the angel, the angel said what? You have found favor in the Lord. That's a great, it's one of the greatest compliments in the Word of God is saying that, is when she's told that, she said that. So think about this young lady that is going into this knowing that my son is going to be born to go to the cross. Mothers, think about that for a moment. I know several of you, including my mother, has lost a child. Now, my brother, 25 years ago, went home to be with the Lord. And you know the pain and the agony. A lot of you have seen the pain and the grief and the agony that's a mother losing a child. Well, Mary gave birth... To yes, he was in his he was the savior of the world. He was a one hundred percent God, and he's one hundred percent man. Right? We understand that. But it's her child. This is her baby. Now think about as she's holding her baby. She knows that eventually she knew. She found favor with God. She was a good Christian girl, right? She was one that followed. She knew she did her best to serve God throughout her life. But yet, knowing that, she also knew Old Testament. She also knew Scripture. She also was taught in you know Sunday school, as we say. And she knew what the book of Isaiah said, right? She knew that if you want to read how bad it's going to be for the Savior, you can read the Gospels in the New Testament and see what was done to them in a nutshell, but you want to see truly how bad it was towards Him. Read the book of Isaiah. Read the prophecy of what's happening to the Son of God. What's going to happen on the cross? What's going to happen leading up to the cross? It says that He was unrecognizable. He was beaten so bad. Now she's holding this baby. Think about this, mothers. She's holding this baby that she knows is born to go to the cross, but she also knows that what they're going to do to him. And she still walked along beside him. She still followed him. She still offered him wisdom. She still offered him advice. She still offered him teaching. She still offered him rearing every part of, of what she was doing was raising Jesus in his humanity under the instruction of the Lord. She was a woman of Proverbs 31, wasn't she? She was a woman of Proverbs 31. So we look at this life and then we see what she did throughout his ministry. She was there throughout his ministry. She watched the rejection take place. Uh, I mean, again, mothers, think about that. We want everybody to agree and, and lift up our children, don't we? As any parent, as a father or mother, if you're a good father or mother, you want the best for your kids, don't you? You want them to be lifted up. You don't want people to reject them. You don't want people to talk bad about them. You don't want people to, especially to hurt them. You don't want people to do things like this. Well, she walked around and followed him in a ministry where everywhere he went, there were people that wanted to kill him. There were people that, that mocked him. There were people that said, you're not God. You're not who you say you are. And she just walks along and has to put up with it. She was a mother. Now, she was, again, no different than you. But where she found favor with God was she was a, a believer that was doing her best to grow in her faith. And that set her apart. That set her apart. 
So where do we find our wisdom? Our wisdom comes in different places. According to the book of James, we, we grow as we grow spiritually. We, this, that's our job, right? And in James chapter 1, our job, our faith cycle, our life is to hear the God, God's Word, to believe God's Word, to apply God's Word, and then wait and be patient for God to perfect it or to complete it, right? That's the faith cycle. That's Christian spiritual growth. And then it goes on in James and tells us if anyone's lacking wisdom, Wisdom, what? To ask, and he'll give us wisdom. Ultimately, our wisdom as a believer, if we're doing things right, if we truly have a desire to build a stronger relationship with Christ, if we truly have a desire to build up our soul so full of God's Word so that we can apply it and the world that's watching will see us living this, then we, we say, okay, our job is to do this and we know that God's wisdom is what's going to build us up so that we can share that wisdom with others. Well, He does it through not only His Word, but He does it through your mothers and your fathers. But we're talking about moms. <laughs> so on Father's Day, I'll say He does it through fathers, right? But again, let me read the two verses again. Proverbs 1, 8, 9. Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and do not forsake what? Your mother's teaching. And in 31, uh, verse, chapter 31, verse 26, again, she opens her mouth with what? In wisdom. And again, here's this word, and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. And then look at Ephesians 6, 1 and 3, or listen to it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on earth. Children, do what? Obey your parents, your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? I, I, my kids have asked me before, what does it mean to honor your parents? Because it's saying two different things, isn't it? It's saying obey them, but also honor them. Let me tell you what honoring your parents is. Honoring your parents is taken when your parents are raising you under the instruction of the Lord and your mothers are giving you wisdom throughout life, when they're telling you how to deal with people that are mean to you, when they're showing you what true love looks like, when they're, they're comforting you when you hurt, when you grieve, when you got a boo-boo, they're putting a band-aid on it, right? All of these things they're, they're, they're doing is to set you up to live a life that honors them while honoring God. That's what our job is as children, isn't it? It's to live a life that honors our parents under God's guidance. Remember, they're given to us. Our children are given to us by God. They're blessings from God. So you want to honor, I tell my kids, that's how you honor us. You honor us through living a life that's faithful under the instructions of the Lord. That's how you honor us. That means you don't go out and do things that I've told you are not good to do. You go out and do things for Christ, not for the world. You do things that build people up, that, that uh, encourage people, that, that, that motivate people towards Christ, that uplift them to where they're, they're, they're thinking that they can do anything instead of cutting them down where they feel like they're worthless. Do these things. That's how you honor me. Well, does that mean I don't have to take trash out? Oh, it's the obeying part. Yeah, you still have to take it out. Sorry, I told you to. Right? There's a difference. A life that's honoring your father and your mother is a life that's honoring your Lord and Savior. That's how it works. So we get this wisdom. Our life comes at us from birth. The perfect example, Willie was talking, Gary, and, and, and we had a great Wednesday night thing at the gym. 
But this is something that I've said numerous times, and I, and I also heard Willie say it. There is no greater example of God's unconditional love for us as a mother's love for her child. That's a picture. It should be a picture. It should be a picture of what God's, uh, just a taste of what God's unconditional love. Now, God's love goes so far, but a taste of what that looks like. I remember when Amy was pregnant with Michaela, my oldest, just turned 23. And Al was, we, we still had a, uh, a family business at that time, and Al was there. And Al was talking to me, and he said, are you excited? Of course. I mean, I'm nervous, but yeah, I was excited. And I said, what's it like? And he said, let me tell you. He said, you taught and you've learned about unconditional love your whole life. I said, yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I started going to doctoral studies when I was two years old. So of course. And he said, you know what it means? I said, yeah, of course. He said, but let me tell you, until you hold that baby, you have no clue. And I hear this, and I'm going, yeah, well, all right, man. You know, Al, Mr. Counselor Al, like, yeah, okay, Al. I'm telling you, when I held her for the very first time, I heard Al's little voice in my ear saying, this is unconditional love. And I went, wow. Wow. This is it. It doesn't matter if she poops on me. It doesn't matter if she cries all night. It doesn't matter if she drools all over the place. It doesn't matter if I'm trying to get sleep and she can't stop crying. I still love her. Isn't that amazing? Well, let me tell you. Husbands and fathers, we start that the moment they're born. A mother starts that the moment the baby is being formed in her womb. They really do. They really do. It is an example of the love that God has for us. It should be. Unfortunately, in some cases it's not. But as a Christian mother, it does. And we learn a lot from our moms, just as the Bible tells us. We learn a lot. We're given wisdom. God uses a godly woman, a godly mother, to rear a child and teach them certain areas of their life, of their daily routine. Fathers have their role as teaching children certain things, but mothers have a special place, don't they? Mothers have a place that that, uh, like I said earlier, that not only is a teaching and a, a w of wisdom, but it's also doing it through a comforting method. It's, it's amazing to me how a mother, it, it kind of reminds me of God. It's not, God can be this love, He is a loving, compassionate, merciful God, can He? He can, you can feel the loving arms of God in times that you're like, wow, the only way I make it through this is God's loving, comforting arms, and I'm just laying in them, and thank you for getting me through this. And then there's times that you can feel those loving, comforting arms all of a sudden flex a little bit and pop you in the rear when you're doing something stupid, right? And you go, well, I can't believe you did that to me, God. And he goes, well, don't do it again. Yes, sir. So isn't it amazing how that's how a mother is too? A mother that's teaching you the ways of the world, that's teaching you the rights from wrongs, that's teaching you how to treat others and how to love and how to be patient and how to this and how that. A mother, you can jump in her arms and say, I got a boo-boo, and mama will kiss it and put a little Band-Aid on it and say, there you go, does it feel better? And it's amazing how when a mother kisses a boo-boo and puts a Band-Aid on it, it 
it's immediate like, immediately like it feels better, isn't it? It's like it can be the nastiest little burn from a concrete driveway, and mama kisses it and puts a Band-Aid on it, and you're like, man, it's, it's gone. It's amazing. But then that same mother can chase you around the house with a wooden spoon <laughs> because you did something that could get them, come here, or make you go out like when I was growing up, make you go out and break your own switch, you know? Go get a switch. I remember my grandmother on my dad's side, she had a weeping willow tree, and there were times that we had to get the weeping willow switch. And the weeping willow, I didn't get spanked. I'm not going to stand up here and say I got spanked a lot. I didn't. I was just a good kid, right? <laughs> yeah. I was sneaky is what I was. But you get that weeping willow tree, and let me tell you, you would think that it was thin. <laughs> that thing would wrap around your leg 20 times. You would have, not only would you have one, you'd have, to, it'd look like a, you put a spring around your leg. It just, <laughs> but that's the way, but that's how a mother is, isn't it? A mother, wisdom is shown to you sometimes through bandaging a boo-boo, Sometimes that wisdom is given to you through discipline. But it's all wisdom. It's all teaching. It's teaching you to be a better person, isn't it? It's teaching you and saying, look, God has given me you. And God has given you me. I've been put in a position to make sure that you're raised the way that God wants me to raise you. And I'm telling you, sometimes it will be a loving hug, boo-boo kiss, but sometimes it will be a whipping. Sometimes it will be a scolding. Sometimes it will be that tough love. But the whole point of a mother's job is to make you a better person. Do you understand that? That is a mother's job, is to make you a better person. And I was fortunate, and I tell people, who I am today, and you may sit there and think, oh, you're terrible, Jeff, whatever. Who I am today is because my mom and dad. That's where it starts. That's, I've had a lot of great mentors in my 48, almost 49 years on earth. I've had a lot of great mentors through teachers in school, through coaches in baseball. I've had a lot of good mentors through in my spiritual life that you know I've done ministry now for 31 years roughly. And I've had mentors... Of course, Mr. Adama, Gary Horton, uh, Tony, um, John Dyer. I mean, there's so many. Chuck Farmer, Peggy Baxter, all these people, Deborah and Boyce Smith. I had a lot of great mentors in my spiritual life as far as ministry-wise. But nothing tops my parents. I am who I am because of the wisdom that came from my dad, but also the wisdom and comfort and teaching that came from my mom. It makes us who we are, doesn't it? It makes us who we are. So today, that's what we celebrate. You're supposed to celebrate them every day, aren't you? I mean, Realistically, it's kind of like Christmas. We talk about Christmas and say, I'm celebrating the birth of Jesus or the Easter. I'm celebrating the resurrection. Well, as a Christian, you ought to do that every day. We just have one day that we dress nice and are nice to people. But the reality is, as a believer, we should celebrate mothers every day. We do it through honoring them, don't we? We do it through living a life that doesn't look bad on them. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you want to honor your parents, then you live a life that people can say, you know what? I 
Yeah, that's old so-and-so's son. Boy, that's a good kid. You don't want them to go, well, don't surprise me, that's so-and-so's son. <laughs> you, you, you see the difference there? Same thing, but you... It's about wisdom. It's about teaching. It's about living a life that will glorify God by honoring your parents, by taking the instruction and the wisdom, godly instruction and wisdom and discipline that's given to you by your mother and sharing that with life, your daily life. I do it with my kids now. A lot of the things that I learned from my mother bringing us to church every Sunday, making sure that if anyone spent the night at our house on Saturday night, guess what? They had to go to church with me on Sunday morning. That's why I hardly ever had anybody spend the night at my house on Saturday night. They would come one time and they'd be, I'd go, what would you think about church? And they'd go, man, that's like going to college class. I know, isn't it great? And they go, no, I'm good. So next week I'd say, hey, man, you want to come spend the night? Oh, uh, well... No. <laughs> Wait, why? Well, I got to do something. Come on, man. But I, I knew that, and that was just part of it. But because my mom's dedication of coming to church every Sunday, and my mom's dedication to making sure that me and my brother were raised up under the instruction of the Lord, it made me who I am today. It made me have a desire to do the same for my children. It made me have a desire to do the same uh, to young people that are around me and part of my group now. That's what we celebrate. So today, lift your mothers up. Today, pray for your mothers. Today, pray for your mother figures. Again, do it every day, but today, you better do it. All right. If you're gonna not, if you're gonna skip a day, don't let it be today. So again, the wisdom that is given to you by mothers, the entrustment that God has put on mothers over His children, cannot be taken for granted. Shouldn't be taken lightly. Should be looked at as like, wow, my mom was giving me, and I was giving her. God picked her to be my mom for a reason. And that's because He knew that she would raise me a certain way. And she did. And now, you know, as they say, look at me, Mom. I got a bell. Sorry. So, thank you. To all you moms, thank you to all you grandmothers, thank you all to, to all you mother figures. I hope you enjoy your day. You've done a marvelous job. The fact that you're here is amazing. The fact that you're here and there are a majority of the world out there is not sitting in church today, I'll tell you that. But you're here. And I salute you for that. Moms are important People, moms deserve a lot more credit than they get. Moms are the usually the glue that holds a house together, aren't they? They're the glue that holds a house together. And I'll end with this. I was watching an episode of Little House on the Prairie. Young people are going, what? Little House on the Prairie, I said it. And Michael Landon's character, he, he comes in and school had started back. And his wife's over there washing dishes, hand washing dishes, of course, you know, when dishwashers back then. And he says, you know, I can't believe school has already started back. And she goes, yeah. And she's over there just washing away. And he goes, wow, time just flies. She goes, it does. And goes a lot slower unless you get over here and help me wash these dishes. <laughs> and he said, oh, basically saying, that's your job, woman's job. And she says, well, you know your Bible, don't you? He says, well, of course I read my Bible. And she goes, well, I'm pretty sure somewhere in there it says that uh, a man, just as a man washes his dishes, both sides of it. And she goes, so do you need to go sit down? We need to look that scripture up. And he goes, no, I'm good. And he goes and washes the dishes. 
the point of that is mothers are the glue that holds the family together. And we as husbands and fathers should not take that for granted. Should not take that for granted. Be there to lift her up, to praise her, to present her as a beautiful flower, to present her to everyone as non-blemished. What a wonderful gift that we've been given as children is a strong, godly mother that's been put in our life. So...